Hello, welcome to the Excel Olympics YouTube channel. My name is Gash Pakamashek and today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite functions. So this is one of those dynamic array functions. It's called filter. And first I'm going to show you how it works. Then we're going to talk about how you can extend it. And in the end, we're going to talk about how you can actually use it to manipulate things um, in, a, in a very interesting, interesting way. So let's start with how it works. It's a very simple function. So the filter function takes an array and I'm going to say, this is my array. And then you need to tell it what to include. Right? And I'm going to say, well, include all of those rows where this equals, and I'm going to go with Ringo, right? And I'm going to leave the last one for the moment. So what did I get? Well, I got one single row and that is the 11th row where we got Ringo. Now, if I had two rows where Ringo was present, I would get both of those. But what if I had no rows where Ringo was present? So what if no Ringo was present here? Well, then I would get a calc error. Now, you, if you're not dealing with dynamic arrays, then you've never seen this. But basically, it means it's got nothing to return in this case. And that's why over here you have that last if empty. What should it say? Well, I'm just going to say no match. Right, so if it's empty, just say no match. And now if we put Ringo back, right, it gives us Ringo. Now, usually the way I would do this is I would go somewhere here and I would use the unique function to create a list of uniques from a column. Uh, more about the unique function in this video. And then over here, I would create a so let's do data validation a list of everything that this cell defines and because that cell has a unique function it defines the whole range right that's the cool thing about dynamic array so this is now this right but it's dynamic if i added myself over here now i'm in here and now i'm also in here right so that is the brilliance of this. Okay, and now, if I select someone here, I would want this to affect the filter function and nothing easier. So I just say, instead of me hard coding the Ringo, the Ringo, hard coding Ringo, I'm just gonna do equals whatever that cell says. And I got equals George, equals John, equals Paul, or equals Ringo. Kind of a brilliant thing, right? Well, but sometimes you want to take your conditions a step further, right? That's why the if function is so important because it's got those two companions to it, the and and the or functions. So over here, we sort of have a single parameter that says, what is your condition? And over here you say, well, this should equal that. But what if I wanted to say, yeah, so the name should equal this, but also, also this index should equal, uh, should be greater than let's say 40. How would I do that? Well, and it turns out what you need to do is something like this. So your conditions would always look like this, equals this, right? Nothing fancy there. And what you get is a bunch of trues and falses. Again, no issue there, right? And then over here, I could say, well, okay. Then over here, I want to check if this is greater than 40. Again, a bunch of trues and falses. Now, as long as I'm saying it should be John and it should be greater than, I actually have no issues because what I can do with these two is I can just say, yeah, now do take this one 
and everything it defines and just multiply it by this one and everything it defines. So everything that's possible there is ones and zeros, true, false. And multiplying those will also just gives you ones and zeros. So over here, you're good, right? This, you could just take straight up here and just say, yeah. So that equals that times this is greater than 40. And what you also need to do in this case is you will need your parentheses just so it knows where it is. There it is. Right? And that is it. That is my two true statements down here. But what if that was an or? Well, or wouldn't really be an issue because it's a plus. But the plus has a problem because it can give you one, zero, or two. But what you need to feed the filter functions is true, false. So it needs to be a zero or a one. So over here, you will also need to wrap this into. Now, the way I do it is I just say, do that, right? and check if that is different than zero. And that will be true in all instances where it's either a one or a two, and it will be false if it's a zero, and that is exactly what we need. So over here, I can now just do a plus on that, and then say, and then once you check all that, my true check will be if that is different than zero. Right? And now it says this one is spill because there's so many trues, which you can see right here. So I'm just going to delete these so that this can spill. Right? And that is how you use the filter function to get the and and the or right in there. Right? But the filter function can do so much more. And this is where I take more or less the same data. But I use the filter function to get this and this is being run by this. So here I say, do I want the date column? Yes, there it is. Well, it's not showing as a date, but I want it. Do I not want it? No. Do I want the index column? Yes. Do I want the last name? No. All right, so here I have what subset do I want my filter function to return. And over here, I took it to a kind of different level where I said, yeah, I want you to filter by this column. Right? And now it says condition provided not match any, any rows in the table because it says, well, ID should equal John. Well, no, ID should equal five. And there it is. And if I now change this into last name and it says last name should equal Lennon, there it is. And I would really love to see that last name so I know it's correct. There it is. Right, and this will sort of tell you everything you need to know about the filter function and how it can be kind of utilized. So what I'm doing here is a whole lot of things. Now, the longest thing in here is maybe even this, right? What it should return if it gets an error, right? But basically in here, what's happening is I have a filter within the filter. And what that filter within the filter is allowing me to do is it's allowing me to choose a subset of columns. And that subset of columns is defined by one single cell, and that is cell L9. That is this cell. And what does this cell actually do? Well, it just takes this column. So over here I have the row, and it kind of needs the, it needs it in a row um, format, right? It needs the trues and the falses in a row format so it can I'm just going to say multiply them, although that's not what it's doing, with columns, right? So it needs the row format so that they're the same format. And this one is kind of 
in the column format or it's the other way around it's hard to sell uh, but either way over here i'm saying check this and check if that is equals yes right and if i just did that so if i just said take this and see where that equals yes that would work but it would give me a column of values but i need a row of values so what i did is i used the transpose function on it right transpose function which works brilliantly with dynamic arrays just great so once i have this i can now feed this into my filter function do you see so i'm filtering whatever this gives me and this gives me kind of lots of this conditions and this and a lot i'll, I'll explain that later but then it filters it to only the columns that I need. So do we need the first column? Yes. Second, no. Third, yes. Fourth, yes. Fifth, yes. Okay. And by doing this, I'm kind of getting the best of everything. Right? But the cool thing is, and I don't know if you noticed it before, but before I had something like this. Right? Doing the filter with the filter actually allows you to do this. I'm filtering by the last name, but it's not showing up in the results. Right, And that's why I have the first filter in here, which says, look, this is my range. Right? And then in the condition, what do I want you to filter? I want you to use the offset function to take this first column and just displace it by the match function which is in here and the match function just says look for the last name in the header row and what you're going to get is one two three four so this match is going to say four but if i would have taken an id and displace it by four one two three four i would get the index that's why there's a minus one here that minus one says yeah look give me the last name right and then so this tells me which sort of uh, column i'm sorting by which range i'm uh, not sorting by sorry which range i'm actually uh, which range i'm checking the condition on and then over here i have what is my condition it's whatever this says. And that's why, because this is actually a two-step. Once I change this, this one recalculates, but this one still says Lennon. That's why in between it says, yeah, look, no ID matches Lennon. But if I say, well, what about five? Yeah, we got an ID five, right? Um, and there's another thing here I wanna mention. So the offset function goes like this. Take what? And I'm taking this cell. And then do what with it? Well, offset it by zero rows. So don't go down. But you could go to the right. And that is with this. And, oh, to the right. Yeah, I need to show it like this. And then you can actually, the offset function allows you to blow up your range. So it's a single cell. But then you say, yeah, but it really should be this many rows. So just count how many values are in that range. I could hard code it 11, but you know, it's 11 rows, one column. And once you get that range, now check it towards equals this. And once you get that, so the first filter would actually return this whole range filtered by Lennon. So you would get all of those rows with all columns included. And then you do that in another filter where you can actually pick your poison right you say and i need these columns to be present or i don't want them to be present right do i want the id no do i want the last name yeah right and again this could be wrapped in another sort this could even have a sort by which would be extremely interesting because i could say over here when i have the first filter I could also do a sort by on this. So my array 
is all of this, right? And I want to sort that by, and this is where it gets really tricky. I want to sort it by column number one, two, three, four, five, right? So I want to sort it by the fifth column, and then I could even provide the sort order. And I could say, yes, yeah, sort it descending. Right? And if I now go like this, it's not going to show much difference with the data we have, but it would show differences if we had um, indexes in it. Right? So the ability to have the filter function is brilliant. The ability to have filter of the filter function where you can pick what you want to show in your final results. And yet within the first filter function, you can use all that. That is brilliant, right? That is brilliant. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will start using the filter function today. And uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.